in my way. Ah. This is the last straw. Ah. Ah. You've made me so very hungry. It's time, and the main course. It's At least it's snow and not spin. Marisol, what you're doing is wrong. So we'll be taking those desires back. Shut your pretty little mouth. What would you know? I will consume all who oppose me, no matter who they are. I'll yeah, I'm sure this is going to go fantastically. Come on, what's with all the food? I oh, she kind of want some. <laughs> I mean, it, some of it did look good. Uh, so, weak to Psy and... Not fire. Okay. Unexpected. Okay. What? Hell, yep, that had it. That that was gonna definitely happen. Drop the chandelier on her. Make her spit up the mint back. On your oh. Okay. There it is. Oh, am I not like you? Am I using these up way too quickly or something? Holy shit! When did. When did Sophie just. Or wait, is Sophie. Okay, so is she... Is Sophie consumed or down? It's really sort of unclear to me. And it's still... It's still not weak to fire. Okay. 
so to confirm, that does indeed mean that Sophie just went down in the background while I wasn't paying attention. You think Got you it. Can see? Oh. Maybe. More. There's still more. I must eat every last one of you. You eat eat Also, this is way easier than the lock keeper. There is one left. Good question. Oh, insta kill might be a hand. Uh. Come on. I'm just trying to fucking you. Oh my fucking goodness. Okay. I literally was just trying to turn the fucking camera so I can actually get this fucking thing. Care to join us? Get ready. Suddenly everyone dies. You know how I said it was easier? Apparently. Okay. Okay, that looks like that looks so very fucking bad on my uh Yeah, I'm just gonna go fuck it. And there we go. 
Yay, learning how to use items. It does seem sort of abusable, but at the same time, I only try to use it if, like, it really doesn't go my way. Is that just an excuse? Almost definitely. Uh, I don't know. Gameplay-wise, I do feel as though the game is... The one-on-one -on -one fights are fun, but it also isn't the sort of thing where they are... They are long, long fights. And that's sort of the point where it comes... And it feels like I wouldn't want to do the fight a second time. I say having done multiple of the fights a second time. Uh, without something else, like doing the exact same thing a second time. So it's more interesting to me to just make up for the, like, item usage, I guess, at this point, than it is uh, with trying to do, like, redo the battle, redo the battle, redo the battle to try to do perfectly, because I'm not, I don't really have a perfectionist mindset in, in these. I'm willing to take that. In contrast to other games where I'd, like, purposely not use items, basically. Because uh, items are almost always, very typically, in most games, uh, place there as a way to sort of, like, tune down the difficulty ever so slightly. Uh, to make it or a lot, uh, in the case of some games, in order to make it uh, so that you can play on a certain difficulty, but you have more viability otherwise. Uh, what's going on? Oh, yeah. Ooh, I learned something new. Divine Grace. Okay, that's cool. Uh. Honestly, as much as this is like a good thing. Uh, it, it, is that why she died so early? Did she get hit something like that? Probably going to be way more... Re and it can be re relearned later, so... That's probably better at the moment. Wait! Not yet! I won't let it end this way! I need to wipe out all of Sapporo's injustice! Please stop! Haven't you done enough? What? You're a kind person, Mari-san, and I know you've tried to shoulder all of this alone. The staff member who took bribes, the councilman who tried to set you up, even the girl who died in the accident. <sighs> Each of these things grieved you, and in order to make a city where none of it could reoccur, you took action as you saw fit. Am I right? As the mayor, I know very well that little girl's death ultimately my fault. But my staff betrayed me, all for their insatiable greed. I thought I could leave that awful position behind. Unfortunately, it wasn't as simple as that. Had I gone, I'd only be replaced by greedy scum. That's why I never stepped down. In this world, it's either eat or be eaten. And with circumstances so cruel, I decided I'd be the one doing the eating. Even if every last one of my votes were false, oh. at least I could use them to make the world a better place. Yeah. I, I... This might be the one I relate to the most. I would actually... I wouldn't lie. If, you're not doing it to be popular, right? You're doing it to achieve something. So, like, fake popularity, like, in contrast to the author and whatnot, where, like, that was sincerely about that element of the person. That was sincerely about the element of um, Natsume's, uh, like, the nature of why he wanted to be successful had to do with the approval of your work to others. With her, I don't know how much of that is necessarily part of it, but it really is much more about, like, the actual effect you have on a person. If I was in politics, I'd probably be much more concerned about seeing someone have, just straight up, have a better life, or like, that sort of thing, even if they hated me for it. <laughs> that sort of thing, right? But if I was replaced as mayor, who would be there to honor that little girl's memory? An innocent girl lost her life, yet I could do nothing to stop the evil still afoot. It's not too late to set this right. First, you must tell the people everything that happened. Then can you get a fresh start. But this time, on your own strength. That would be... impossible. I cooperated with those awful men to hide the truth. 
That way I could continue being mayor. There's nothing I can do. <sighs> Stand up, Mariko Hyodo! <gasps> are you just going to stay knocked down? You are a kind and strong woman, not someone who collapses over mistakes. It's very interesting. Because what the argument... He, it's, it's an interesting, like, philosophical argument because it's, like, very much like the self versus the more, like, for the greater good. I forget the... Commu the more of a community focus. That sort of thing. Like, a very personal... Like, what, what... It's like... You could argue that she full well fucking knows all this stuff. But she still potentially choose to uh, take advantage of the situation in order to help most the mo uh, majority of the people as possible. Because none of her motivations seem to come uh, internally outside of her like lack of uh, lack of ability to actually do anything uh, about the corruption. So it's very interesting. That is probably an element of it too, and that's probably what's going to change her mind ultimately. That she is letting that be a focal point of her motivation, and we're going to switch that over. Bye. Is Haru right here? I guess is the point. Uh, you can sort of see where she's going with it, but at the same time, if you were in that situation where you could have fake popularity, like, fake all this stuff, like, like legitimate through this popula fake popularity, legitimate power to force the will of government to do good. Whatever you define as government doing good. Whatever you think that is. We'd probably disagree on something with regards to that in terms of a detail, right? What is for the best from a pure, like, moral sense of view, especially if you've dedicated your life to one of those, basically, right? So stand up and hold your head up high. Because no matter how many times you fall, you can always get back up and start again. Isn't that... Yes. You said that to me a long time ago. Even if you told the people the truth about the incident, there are those who would still see the good in you. Don't let your position ruin you. Think back to what you stood for. She's right, Mayor. You can't give up. If you tell everyone your side of things, they'll listen. When my father died, I felt like my heart was going to break. But thanks to the Phantom Thieves, I was able to stand strong and move forward. That's why I know you can too. Remember the part of you that taught me to get back up, no matter how many times I fall. Yes. You're right. Thank you, Haruka. What I've done was wrong. I drove my employees to the brink and used a strange power to manipulate the votes. I was so driven by my personal agenda, I lost sight of how I originally felt. That is perfectly fair. Yeah, that's sort of how I figured that would go. And yes, like, she's clearly abusing the employees, and the distortion of the situation is putting, like, if you could have that under control without it being distorted, though, right? I know, I know, it's obviously gone too far, but it's like a, like a legitimate, unlike the first two, which were just pettiness and, uh, like, a desperation move. This one has, like, some legitimate arguments behind, like, she's still probably doing good, right? And if she, like, actually stepped down and, like, put herself, her own ability to move forward above, like, the situation, well, like, would uh, lives for other people get worse? This is to assume she's doing good for other people, right? We haven't really got into any political policies. It's just like, oh, make it clean. Oh, we're going to clean the government or clean the city and stuff like that, right? But if you say, like, a welfare program or something like she's champion, and, like, suddenly, oh, the money starts getting siphoning off from that as soon as she steps down. That sort of thing. Like, in an actual real-world political situation. It's just an interesting thought, I guess. And why I ran for mayor in the first place. To make a city beloved by everyone. To give back to the home where I was raised. That's reason enough to take another step. I won't make this mistake again. I never needed this power from the start! 
Haruchan, you've grown so much. Your father must be so happy in heaven. Mari-san. Happy? Uh, this place is collapsing! Uh, Let's go! That was a really nice thing for her to end that on for Haru. Oh, that took us quite a while. Yeah, I'm at three hours of recording today. Haru, you were fantastic. School, very beauty thief like. It was only because you were all with me. But I do wonder if Mari-san will be okay. I'd say so. Her shadow disappeared like they always do. Yeah, your feelings definitely reached her. I'm sure her heart has changed for the better. Well, I guess this wraps up the mission. We still need to confirm that the citizens are all back to normal. It'd be nice if we could do that right away. Can we grab some to eat first? I'm hungry enough to pass out here. It has a point. Battles can what? be fought on an empty stomach. What? We literally got the legendary ramen tickets, Ryuji. I still have them burning through my pocket, unused. And you're complaining about being hungry? You don't eat tonight, you mother... The battle's already over, but still. Hey, can we try Genghis Khan? That delicious lamb barbecue dish? That's a must in Hokkaido. Uh -huh. What? I thought we were finally getting lobster hot pot. Since when did we decide that? Why would we when it's so damn hot out? But if you think about it, isn't Genghis Khan also sort of like hot pot? No way! Isn't it supposed to be barbecue? Well, cooking Genghis Khan does require a utensil called a Genghis Khan pot. And you can't barbecue in a pot. You know what? I, I have no attachment to either of these arguments, so what about sukiyaki? Yeah, now let's expand this discussion. <laughs> Though sukiyaki is served hot pot style, its etymology does refer to curry. Wait. I wonder why. Wait, 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 wait. I didn't mean to actually put some insight into the discussion. Does no! it even matter? I wanted to change the topic. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, the first one sounds more creepy. I like seeing you happy. Yeah, straight from Sapporo, it's Beauty Thieves award-winning smile. I'm relieved too. As well. I thought you might be weighed down by all that's happened. Indeed, she was so weighed down that she met up with our leader for a private midnight chat. Huh? Wait, what? Were you watching? Oh, did, did everyone know? Okay. Because we're all so far apart. <laughs> we're all so far apart that we are definitely hiding our actions away from them, right? All right, Sophia. Find yeah, us the best Genghis Khan in support. Hmm. Sophia? Uh, sorry. Okay, I've got it. Oh, deep in thought. That is a fun, fun little discussion point that we'll probably have later in the same form as before. Is this a joke? What do you oh, there it goes. Well, everyone seems pretty normal to me. Their fanatical support for Mariko Hyodo appears to have died down. I'm glad they're back to their senses. What a drastic change. Just goes to show how powerful a monarch's influence can be. Hey, guess what? Hyodo-san's holding a press conference right now. Thank you all for taking your time to gather here today. Actually, there's something I've been meaning to share with everyone. As of today, I will be resigning from office. I do not intend to seek re-election either.
During my time as mayor, I've betrayed all of your trust. You may think of me as a mayor who's earned your trust, but in truth, there's plenty that I'm ashamed of. The snow sculpture that collapsed was built by an unscrupulous company that bribed one of my staff. In spite of my responsibility, I neglected to see the finer details and went ahead with the construction. As a result, the sculpture ended up collapsing and a girl's precious life was lost. Furthermore, I elected to cover up the truth, all so I could save my position. I've been garnering votes I didn't deserve in order to stay on as mayor. I betrayed everyone to protect myself and covered it up by allowing more wrongdoing. I am among the guilty. That little girl, she died because of me. <sighs> And others, and others. Such Let's not forget to throw them under the bus. Please reinvestigate the case and offer my full assistance. And again, I will drop out of the election and forfeit my position as me. Don't forget to throw the other fuckers under the bus. Do not take it yourself, just by yourself. Seems that hyoro sans made up her mind. I wonder if she'll be arrested. Good question. Yoda was afraid that if she wasn't the mayor, she couldn't protect her people. She could have told the truth and made her underling take the blame. But she was concerned about other evils potentially lurking in the shadows. I think this turned out for the best. Mari-san wouldn't have wanted to hide her mistake forever. Zenkichi is on the line. Hey, you guys see Yoda's press conference? <laughs> I'm not going to take credit for it. Yeah, we did. Yep. You all did a bang-up job. Really, can't thank you enough. They plan on bringing Kyoto in as a key witness regarding the accident. I knew you'd want to analyze her phone, too. So I pulled a few strings. And now I'm her personal chauffeur. At least as far as the station. If you want, I can open up some time for you to talk to her. Just tell me where you want to meet. <sighs> yeah, that's a good one. How could you ever forgive me, Kaho-chan? Mari-san. Yeah. She definitely feels like she's gotten her, uh... Her personal priorities straightened out again, at the very least. The, the macro elements of it is still very, a very interesting topic. That I do not expect them to really get into. Haru-chan. Listen, there was something wrong with me. It's like I was in a terrible dream. I don't know when it was that my heart grew so cold. But after what you told me, I remembered who I really was inside. When I became mayor, I wanted to protect the city and everyone in it as if they were my own family. I remembered that feeling thanks to you. I've finally been able to confront myself, and I realized that I was doing a horrible disservice to that girl. I had lost sight of reality and begun acting self-righteous. Nothing I did was for her sake. But Mari-san, you were doing the best you could. No, it's the truth. Had I not realized my mistake, I would have likely continued to hurt even more people. That's not what Kahochan would want. So let me say thank you, Haruchan. Thank you for saving this city. For saving my family. Mari-san! Your father's recent passing must have caused you so much turmoil. I'm sorry I added to it. But if there's anything I can do for you in the future, any way I can be there, just ask me. I say this because you're a precious part of my family, too. Thank you so much, Mari-san. Oh, Haru-chan. Oh, yeah, she <laughs> was really nice in the end. I suppose I must get going. Though I am concerned about the state of affairs I've left our city in, I'll leave it up to my successor. An arrogant wretch like me has no place being the mayor. Does that mean you won't be involved in politics anymore? 
<laughs> I mean, maybe it's just like the root of that distortion that was there before, but... Not trusting anyone... Yeah, maybe that is it. The inability to trust anyone else to get the work done. Yeah, maybe I have a bit of that myself. Yes. I'm too ashamed to show my face in public. And at my age, there are plenty of younger folks who can... Mayor. Your? The family? I saw the I news. Uh... So you're resigning. And you're leaving politics for good? That's right. I've promised to step down and never... You can't be serious! Resigning won't bring her back. In fact, it won't change a thing. Coho. Nothing can change what happened to my daughter. Hey, uh, shouldn't we get in there? Hold that thought a moment. Huh. Another element of... Another element of the distortion. So you can't. Can't just run away. You need to start over and become our mayor again. What? What? When I was weeping with rage and grief, you stood there and cried with me. Instead of running away, you were there when I needed someone the most. I know your character more than anyone. Ma'am. Thank you. Sharing your heart with me, then I promise to both you and your daughter, I will stand back up and become your mayor again. Marisa. Hmm. I don't get it. I mean, I do, but... I know this is a sad moment. Everyone is crying. I... <laughs> no, it's, it's sort of funny. Her reaction was like, hmm... Okay. <laughs> My reaction was similar, like, hmm. Because I'm, I'm less looking at it from like, a, oh, it's a sad moment. I'm more thinking, because like, when she was just like, I, I know they like purposely made it like she was being aggressive and turned it into a supportive thing. But at first it was like, wow, this feels really manipulative. And then it turned into more of a nice thing, but it still felt pretty manipulative. Yeah, manipulative is part of that, right? But it also feels warm. How would you describe this? Uh, I think joy is better than happiness. I see. So that's why Haru helped Yodo transform sadness into happiness. Recording valuable data. Sophia has learned happiness. I said joy. That must have been the mom of the girl who passed away. Because I think there's a distinct difference between happiness and joy. Like, they're sort of the same, but I think the implications do make them distinctly different. You know, it seems like she really understood Yoda's intentions. I'm so happy for you, Marisa. She reminded me of what Haru said in jail. Stand up, Marco Yodo! Like that? <laughs> hey! That was a tender moment! There's no need to reenact it. Yeah, but you played it so cool back there! Really touched my heart. <laughs> well played, beauty thief. Well played. Could you please forget it already? Indeed. <laughs> true. Why? <laughs> it was your. <laughs> it, it is your true, true self. Come on. One day we need an actual persona just called Beauty Thief. Solve the problem. What comes next? Doesn't seem like we're much uh, making much proper, uh, progress until Zenkichi gets back. Sightseeing while we're waiting. Uh, Ferris nice. wheel. Oh, okay. Good idea. You invite someone to come up. I could. Are you trying to tell me something, game? Are you trying to tell me something? Okay, it looks like it's literally just walking around and... Okay, so I am not... Oh, I could at least make a save here if I really feel like doing it later. Because I very well might just straight up feel like doing it later, right? But for now, I think I'm just going to pick one that I want to do. And 
Because, like, if I was going to do multiple, and I wouldn't do them all. I'm not really interested in that. If I was going to do multiple, I'd probably also go do, like, Ryuji and maybe Yusuke just for, like, the funny part of it. But I could sort of imagine how that, uh, how that would go anyways, right? What are you going to do? <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's like, I walk up to her. Is something wrong? How are you doing? And I'm like, and, Mako and Mor Morgana is just like, you're going to ride the Ferris wheel there? And I'm just like, yep. Let's get going. <laughs> Oh, a Ferris wheel. Oh, that sounds like fun. Shall we go then? Incredible. I never would have thought there's a Ferris wheel uh, in the middle of the city like this. <laughs> city lights are beautiful. Thanks for inviting me, Ryoku. Um. So, uh, am I wrong to consider this a date? Oh my goodness, we've been through so much already. I'm not going to claim that I remember all of it. It's been fucking five years, but still. <laughs> One of them is... Uh, yes. You nailed it. Well, um... Uh, y yes, I, I... I thought so. Well, I, I hope I don't embarrass myself. <laughs> uh, would have been better for me to not be like... Yeah, I, I wanted to be clear about my intention, right? I'm sorry if I don't seem like my usual self. I'm just not used to situations like these. Yeah, it might have been better to, like, not have her think it was a date just so she, so she could be a bit more, um, relaxed. She probably would have treated it like a date regardless, right? Now that I'm in college, the other girls I know tell me about their boyfriends all the time. Oh, is, is that how it works for you, Miss College Girl? I'm not that far removed from college myself. Actually, I'm progressively more removed from college every day. <clears throat> Fuck, I'm feeling old now. <laughs> oh, I was in college when I first played the original game. That's the thing. <laughs> oh. I got myself worked up thinking about how they're all growing up around me while I'm stuck being a kid. You know, something like that. Oh my. Oh, I really haven't changed at all, have I? Uh, don't make yourself grow up. I like you like this. Yes. That's also sounds weird, but the sentiment is what I mean, not like the weird way to phrase it. Good point. I need to enjoy my youth while it lasts. Hmm. I was thinking. Last year, you all taught me that I had the power to change within me all along, but now I'm seeing the good in things that never change, like how close we've grown. I want to stick with the Phantom things for as long as possible. <laughs> you, most of all. <laughs> That's why we have to stop this case and clear your name, no matter what. Ah, oh, that was nice. And very mature. So I went to talk to Hyodo, but nothing new came out of it. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, auto, auto, auto. All she explained is that she could control whoever added her as a friend on Emma. Huh. I mean, that's the same as what we've heard about before. Back to square one. Come on, don't give me that look. Here, I at least got her smartphone. Now that's what I want to see. After reviewing the facts, I've just about confirmed it. Each of these so-called incidents, I think they all stemmed from a mastermind. Oh? I'm curious as to why you think so. Yodo, Natsume, Alice, all three were changing people's hearts to do bad things. But deep down, none of them were truly evil. At the very least, they're not the same as the rulers who distorted reality for their own sakes and ended up spawning palaces. I'd been considering that as well. Before Natsume lost sight of his writing, he was diligently working toward his dreams. Alice, too. She was doing her very best to be a ray of light and hope for other people. Mari-san was also striving for the betterment of everyone in Sapporo. Right. They're different from criminal scum like Kamoshida and Madarame, who acted only for their own benefit. Okay, but how does a handful of not-so-evil monarchs prove there's a mastermind behind all this? The fact that jails are fundamentally different from palaces provides us a big clue. For starters, jails don't have any treasures for the taking. All we found are people's stolen desires. That means monarchs don't have twisted enough wills to reshape reality and form treasures. 
Which would mean that jails aren't created by the monarchs themselves. Someone else must be doing the creating. Yep, got there a while ago, but glad to see we're establishing it. We're not, I don't, I, I said it was five or six. I don't even remember. I think I just looked up a number and I saw someone mention five or six was. Either way, I just wanted an idea just so I could have an idea of how far I was through the game at a given time. I'm happy we're establishing this now instead of this being like an end game reveal because if we got like most of the way through the game with like no real progression on that front and it was just like, they're not made by the monarchs. And it's like, really? I'm pretty sure I got that after the first one. Our final clue is the locks on all those bird cages. In order to get to the Monarch, we've always had to unlock a door that denies us passage. I had thought this was just a security measure designed to protect the Monarch and the desires held within. But if that were the case, why would traumatic memories the Monarch would rather erase be the key to unlocking it? Um, it could be a self-defense mechanism, right? I mean, if you're talking about, like, self-inflicted situations, there is an inherent sort of pessimistic view each of these people have of each uh, of themselves right like, like if we're just talking about purely like could it be them that formed that situation uh, uh for the birdcage and whatnot that doesn't seem like it has to be someone else interfere uh intervening because it's not like if, if you took what the palace rulers were like and they had a very high uh opinion of themselves right in some form it was a twisted view of their nature and their place in the world for these, it's the same sort of thing, but it's from a very negative perspective where you have the first girl who was very much like being bullied, basically, right? And a lot of her like view of herself was based around that. Failing writer, a uh, politician who saw herself as basically a cog in the problem that she was powerless to fight against. And she was just one more among them, right? And the monarchs and the desires was a desire to overcome that sort of uh, more negative view and in a sense and probably what Morgana is getting at here the monarchs are locked in the jail themselves right they can't get out because they're locked in their bird cages give or take right given that these are cognitive worlds maybe it means monarchs think their trauma will protect them I find that rather odd if anything, I would think it's the other way around. Correct. What if it is the other way around? Why might a door like that exist? To keep the monarch confined. To keep them in. Because they're a prisoner of that place. So, okay. So it doesn't necessarily mean a mastermind. It just means the nature of the place. It Okay, I get where Morgana's going with it. It's not a matter of proving that they're not the ones who form the jail element. It's just the nature of it means that they're not the defining source of the jail themselves, which is I guess the sole point that he was trying to make in the first place, outside of the mastermind thing. But the point being that there has to be another source is the thing that leads to a mastermind idea. Right. I think so too. What if that door isn't to keep intruders out, but to trap monarchs in? You mean they're trapped? I thought the monarchs are the ones in charge. Think about it. What would happen if a monarch tried leaving their cage? They'd touch the door, and then hear the voices of their trauma? Exactly. They'll remember what made them so warped in the first place, and stick to their guns as a monarch. And thus, the cycle continues unbroken. The monarchs really are birds in a cage. From that perspective, the shadows protecting the keys inside the trauma cell hold a far more sinister purpose. They aren't there to prevent the Monarch's trauma from being discovered. They're wardens guarding an elaborate system to ensure the Monarch's imprisonment. Let me get this straight. You're basically saying these Monarchs are being manipulated. And by virtue of that, there's somebody doing the manipulating. How's Hyodo-san's smartphone looking? Nothing wrong with her phone or the Emma installed. But I did find traces of surveillance. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean someone's manipulating, but it does mean someone's benefiting from that situation. 
enough to at least set up a situation where perhaps not necessarily that someone else figured out the trauma and set up the birdcage and all that sort of stuff. It could have formed naturally uh, as way of their natural cognition. And they could have been just the one to rise to the top monarch style, right? Uh, but it does imply at the very least someone else set up that situation because that situation presumably benefits them in some way, right? Uh, so, I don't necessarily... Uh, I mean, I would disagree. Obviously, they're going to lead to whatever conclusion the story leads to. But based on the logic, I do feel as though it leads more towards... Well, it doesn't necessarily lead to all the specific stuff they said, I guess is my point. Huh. I'll bet it's the same snooper we keep running into. Though I'm lost as to who it might be. So this observer and our mastermind may just be one and the same. Hmm. Anyone have any guesses? Our first suspect is Medis, the company in charge of Emma. Since you can't get into jails without Emma, I can't write it off as mere coincidence. Medis, huh? Uh, too bad we can't just storm their headquarters. You mean the cops can't actually do that? Of course not. How could we even put out a warrant on them? By saying they go around turning people into monarchs? You have a call from Ichinose. Hi there! Sorry for the relative lapse in communication, but I did turn up some info that I thought you guys might like to know. So, I've been looking into Emma all this time, and I still have yet to find any differences between her past and present versions. I mean, this is state-of-the-art tech, not something just anybody could pry open and take a look inside. But then I took a peek at Emma's changelog, and that's where things got interesting. It seems Emma was transported to Okinawa at some point after I sold her to Medis. Wait, what? Wait, 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 what? What do you mean transported? You mean physically? Why would that be in a change log? Wait, what? Yes, exactly. Why was the first thing that popped into my head? So I dug around some more, and I found that off the coast of Okinawa, on the island of Kokojima, Medis apparently has a research lab. Oddly enough, its existence is unknown to the public. When I called to ask for records, nothing came up. Okay, how did you find out then? Okay, also, did you find out Okinawa because someone used... Is, this is a secret lab that, one, they either put that it was transported there in the change logs, or two, they put some sort of record indicator in the change logs of a publicly available app that indicated research being done at Okinawa uh, in their secret labs. Sorry, I just need to blink a few times there. Basically, they're running a secret research lab. How crazy is that? So, if Emma's been altered in any way, I would think it had to have been done on that island. Well, guys, wasn't I a super stellar source of information? No. Have you considered just using a direct comparison between the code of the original and the code that they have on the phone? Because you just said that you couldn't find any differences. And your big hint was if there is changes, which there literally can't be if you've done a code compile comparison or something like that, and found that they are just identical. If the code's just lit... I guess it depends on how cognitive science works, right? Uh, sorry, I'm trying, I'm trying to think that one way too through, I guess. Yeah, well done. Oh, is that praise I hear? You mean I did a good job? Go me! Well, guess it's bye for now, Phantom Thieves. Please regale me with tales of your adventure another time. Uh, please don't yell so that out. And, okay, bye. <laughs> Explain. Okinawa? Crystal clear waters? Shisa statues? Juicy pineapples? Chinsuko cookies? Okay, Ryuji, please have a good one to finish this, but I just realized I don't think I mentioned any of that. <laughs> I think they just all came to their own conclusions. Uh, did that one, yeah. I'm familiar with it. Ooh, that too! It's that ramen-like thing, yeah? Guys, can you snap out of it? If it's an unregistered facility, we could always say we're conducting a field survey. 
That way we could ensure their cooperation. We may even find proper evidence that could be used in court. It may be well worth going, but Kukujima is a bit far from the Okinawa mainland. Then I guess we'd have to go by plane. Wait, what about our precious Feathermobile? We've taken it all this way. That's what you're naming this thing? As a name? Plus, you said it'd be dangerous using public transportation. Even so, wouldn't it be too complicated to try to reach Okinawa by car? Oh, give me a sec. Hey, what's up? Yeah. Yeah, of course I'm aware, but I also have a job to do, you know? <laughs> Who's he talking to? Why would I lie? I'm being honest, I swear. Uh, of course I remember. The thing is, I'm a little... Uh, well... Oh. You got hung up on. Uh, okay, guys. Plane to no-go. We're driving. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's fun. We're driving? What does that mean? Uh, and also, that didn't sound like any of the people you talked to, like, for your job before. Is that like family or something? You I hung up on all you. All the way to Okinawa by car? <laughs> the thing is, <gasps> oh. I need to make a stop along the way. So we'll be heading to Kyoto first. Oh, 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 oh. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Um. Um. Not, not. Oh. Granddaughter, granddaughter. Uh, I was blanking in the word. Yes, it was his granddaughter. There's my bet. Are we going to go to Kyoto to find, uh, meet your granddaughter? Did you say Kyoto? Wait, what's this about? Yeah, I primarily work for the Kyoto Police Department. I thought I'd take a moment to catch up, share intel, you know, cop stuff. After that, we head to Kobe. We can take a direct ferry to Okinawa from there. That ought to cut down on time. But that's still quite a distance, even to Kyoto. Not to worry, I'll do the driving. You're tagging along? Wait. Am I to believe that Nijima's been doing all the driving? Okumura, I thought you already had your license. I do have it. It's just... I don't have much experience behind the wheel. Plus, Haru's driving is... not exactly... Uh... <laughs> well, in any case, we're taking off immediately. If we're leaving from here, you'll need to take the Hokuriku Expressway. The estimated travel time will be... About... 21 hours, give or take. Gramps is correct. 21 hours? Are you nuts? You forget I'm an officer of the law? We're badass at driving. What's with him all of a sudden? No, it's you're like not. He lit a little fire under his ass. Oh my god. His fucking granddaughter called. <laughs> this is definitely what it is. His granddaughter called and he's making an excuse so he can go home. Fine uh, by me. So long as I can visit Kyoto at last. There goes Inari. Revealing his true colors. <sighs> oh my goodness, I should end it right here. I should end it right here. <laughs> I will see you all next time. Drive safely, everyone. Okay, and we're back. If that happened to be a good place to end the episode, that would be fantastic. We'll see how much longer is left, but drive safely, everyone. All right, then, let's hit the road. I'll get you rascals there in record time. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been a wild ride, but we're now even closer to the truth. Let's head out as soon as we're ready. Make sure you leave nothing undone. Okay, I think that's telling me that that's the cutting off point for this one. Okay, well, next time we're going to drive safely. Right, guys? Okay. <laughs> Never has that been more appropriate. So... I'll see you all. Oh, I guess just general thoughts before I, like, leave it for, like, however long it takes me to do the next part. Uh, I'm liking the game. Uh, I, I, I'm sort of... I feel like I've hit my general... I'm not, like, progressively liking the combat more like I was earlier. I think I sort of hit that, like, good uh, spot where I feel like I've got a good feel for the combat. And... I'm not necessarily desiring a bigger challenge, at the very least. I, I like normal for the boss fights. Maybe not the Lock Keeper. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, and, and we'll see 
Exactly. Hmm. It also depends how many more Lockkeeper fight. If there's only like five or six of them, eh. they're just so long sometimes. Oh, like, they do really start to feel like they drag on. I, I, I don't know. It's specifically that last boss fight after having the one before where I, it feels like I'm either missing something uh, or if see. I'm not. It feels way more dragged out than it should be. Like, I feel like the fight would be a lot more fun if it was, like, two-thirds the length that it was. Is it just a health sponge? Is that the problem? Because it's not like the fight becomes, like, significant. It's not like it goes through interesting phases. It's just occasionally you get a bunch of enemies and stuff like that. Ah, uh, whatever. It's an action game, so you expect the fights to go a bit faster. So yeah, gameplay-wise, I'm liking it, but I'm questioning some of the elements of it as someone who hasn't played Musou games before. Has never actually played a Musou game before outside of getting enough experience to know that I don't particularly care for them. Though I have, like like I said, the one-on-one -on -one boss fights for this. Uh, uh, narratively, I do feel as though we're sort of... It's fun, right? It's not taking itself too seriously, and there's a bit of a story there, but it does feel like they had a much shorter story than, uh... <laughs> it feels like they had a much shorter story and added in filler, basically, right? Because it feels like we basically have turned our eyes to Medis like, a while ago. And uh, let me guess. We're going to show up in Kyoto, and there's going to be another monarch that shows up that we need to take care of while we're there. Which is going to now be two of, I'm gonna guess, if we go to Medis right afterwards, that would be five. Uh, two of them were just ones we stumbled upon along the way. We didn't necessarily get a lot more of information out of doing that and whatnot, but uh, it's an interesting discussion at the very least. I like the game well enough, but the story, and I guess the gameplay a little bit, like I talked about, does feel like it's purposely stretching itself to make the game longer. Uh, for better and for worse, like, I'm, I'm not complaining, but it does feel like it is hurting the pacing of everything a bit, right? It's not like it ruins the pacing by any means, but just a general thought for where I am in the game currently. We'll see how I feel come, you know, more of the jails, so we'll see y'all next time, right? And figure out how we feel after that. So I'll see y'all then. Drive safely, everyone. See you